late because I forgot to synchronize it with the music. And we ride. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, no, I've been recording this whole time. Perfect. All right. It's the last time on a Schmet of Glass Spin Chimes. You guys arrived at the Bastio District, fused with the Plain of Eden designated Nosos, and uh, led by the scientist Denison. Um, immediately, you were given an ultimatum by a familiar face. A familiar razor face, to be precise. <laughs> as he says that uh, if you step off the lift, he's going to murder every single one of you. And um, in a vie for a vie for diplomacy, Virgil's like, hey, but yeah, um, you took our very good friend and I'd like to check up on him, make sure he's doing okay in Sentra. And using the help of a good old persuasion check, Razorface was amicable to that and was willing to take Virgil and Virgil alone to see Sentra wherever he may be in this grand floating city. Um, that has been created by CD Project Red. Uh, so basically immediately after that, he walks over to the console and begins disengaging the lift to send it off back to where it came from. And Sayako was not a big fan of this. So she was like, you know, keeping in mind the, the fact that she has things to do here uh, that that have quite a bit of, uh, of relevance to Izuni and Kanan. She jumps off the lift and pleads for Razorface to wait. But before Razorface can react to this, Virgil takes off a necklace that was designed to bring someone in Jericho to the sepulchre. And he snaps it, activating its effects in this place that is neither in Eden nor in Jericho, or perhaps in both simultaneously. And uh, thick, thick cold permeated throughout the air before a massive rift opened on the right side of the lift station, and the sepulchre, the primavera with it, was forcibly pulled through in very large quantities at a time. Um, Razorface immediately realized what was happening, chalked it up to Virgil betraying uh, the intentions that he had set forward with to go to go and meet with to go and meet with uh, Sentra. A uh, big fight happened. Primavera got the, the fucking shit shot out of him. The portal closed around like a good twenty percent of his body. Um, the shock of the damage as well as the vastly diminished power levels that that resulted afterwards um slackened the hold that the primavera had over calliope uh who has since reawakened off screen we don't really know what's going on with that yet but uh but also that reawakening is accompanied by cecil getting real fucked up and having a bunch of memories that were methodically placed in in his consciousness forcibly taken away. Um, Virgil and Amalia were both cut off from the Primavera by Razorface in the conflict using the dagger that he uh, he had initially tried to kill Amalia with that didn't work because she had Jidex materia on her. Um, and uh, finally they were able to repel him, the fearsome foe. Virgil in hand with the with the uh, what was it? It was it was it was it was it was you had you had a an electrical panel called Gnosticism, right? Yes, Virgil. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that happened, and as the natural inhabitants of Nostos slash the Bastio district began to filter back into the lift station after this immense conflict, one of which, or one of them in particular, was a lot more brazen about approaching you. It seems like they had a lot more of an idea of what was going on and wasn't quite as, as plagued by the same mystique of your foreignness that the other ones kind of had in that they were, they were approaching you and treating you like almost zoo animals with, with how different you all looked. And this person identified themselves as someone named, scrolls down to it in my notes, Fenica. And they brought you up across a whole bunch of bridges in the Nostos district and in your guys' dazed state, you don't have a great grasp on where you are. But afterwards, you're brought into a building, you're all accommodated on couches, a few of you are unconscious, namely the, um, the people that were 
that were summoned to Eden by the Primavera because he wants to know what the fuck just happened. He's in bad straits, and this is essentially where we pick up. Cecil, you've been unconscious uh, for other reasons, and you have just come to. You're sitting on a sitting on a, a very fine velvet couch in a pretty large, um, like, like tall and grand lobby of, of of one of the buildings that was in the Nostos district that you had only seen from afar. And in front of you is. Uh, it's a very elegant looking furnace, Arium. The rest of your party is kind of corralled around you. Um, I believe the people that were still in Eden are, are there. And you feel a tugging at your mind that's trying to get you there, but it's not strong enough to send you back unconscious. Everyone else, things are as they were at the very end of last session. What? Wasn't Cecil called to the Primavera site? Um, yeah, but he was unconscious there as well. Yeah. And he just woke up here. Um, so I think it's only Catherine that is with the Primavera at the current moment. Catherine, Catherine got pulled back. It was uh, Cecil that was still there. I am fine oh. to do that with the Primavera, honestly. Um, okay, alright. So Cecil's still with the Primavera. My bad. I guess I got it backwards. You come to an Eden in front of the Primaveral. Just to recap what he looks like, uh, from his right shoulder down to his waist, there's a massive incision. He's missing an arm. Uh, one of his legs is a stump. He's, ah, I remember. I, I offered to try to fix him. There's, there's a huge crater in his head that, ah. uh, that like this, this liquid light is pouring forth through and, and pooling around his body. Uh, he's, he's not standing up. He kind of sitting forward and supporting himself on the only good arm he has left. Uh, I guess if that's where we're starting, I will ah. start with this song. Um, so Cecil stands up, assuming he was unconscious there for a p period of time. Sure. Um, and he brushes himself off. And he looks down... Looks down. The primavera sitting down is still meeting at uh, eye level. Like, where are we at here? I think the primavera sitting down is probably about eleven feet tall. He, okay. it, what he would look like whole is much larger than what you're used to. He's usually about yeah. 10, 11 feet tall, but apparently, in in the time that you've spent apart, he was getting a lot larger. I see. And Cecil just like looks at him and scoffs, and is just like, <laughs> "Look at you." <sighs> And he's just like, he, he looks a lot more disdainful than a lot of the other party members around. Um, so he, he looks at you and just kind of pushes off from the floor of the sepulcher. Uh, his hand that was supporting him dripping with the liquid light that was pouring from his head. And he sits back. Uh, a shelf of ice is conjured behind him that he can like sit back against and there's a good couple of minutes where he's content to just make this eye contact of of like appraisal and and thinking through what has what has just occurred and he says if you would be so kind i would enjoy some kind of summary of what occurred in nostos If you're this weak and frail and etc., what do you give us, us ignorant slaves? And he says, just kind of like looking at him. There's like a, there's like a, there's some serious animosity going on in the way that Cecil's like, like looking at him. Like he's looking at him like he looked at people in like, uh, the, what do you call it? The Dark Tower. Yeah, no, not just the Eshoi, uh, the uh, the tiered gardens, etc. Okay. Like sneery. Yeah, like like I'm there's a there's a there's a there's a timeline where I kill you, sort of deal. If I uh, promise. To 
extrapolate completely to your relationship afterwards. Will you oblige my request for the summary? I don't remember you being too fond in keeping promises, but I'll give it to you as best as I can, assuming you... You know, never mind. Um, so, our good friend Virgil, who's a bit uncomfortably close to you, uh, decided to make something of a foolish decision. And that's where you ended up, so... Hopefully, you know, him patching you up shouldn't be, you know, should should uh, make up for this. So, you know, I mean, I don't have much skin in talking to you. Cecil's trying not to, like, let on that he was, he was briefly unconscious for it. He's, he's, he's got his cards up a little bit. You're good. Um... There's uh, there's this kind of there's a a presence that appears to be probing before it's quickly retracted, almost as if this is something the Primavera would usually give very little thought to, and and him opting into choosing not to before it happens. As his posture doesn't shift, but he but the eye contact breaks finally, and he says. I see. And what of Nostos? Is it still whole? Uh, out of character, shit. Remind me, is it? I, I. Um, you're yeah. the last. The last you'd seen of Nostos was when you were going down after Razorface had run away. There was very little damage to Nostos in comparison to the uh, right. portal yeah, closing okay. on the sepulcher. Good. Okay. Um, he kind of like nods a few times. It's like. Well, it's as fine as it, you know, will be. I personally believe that we can fulfill this grand ordeal without you, so I'm weighing my options here while you uh, are in your predicament. How sure are you of that? In character? Uh, in character, Cecil is about I want to say 60% sure, but he's coming off as 100% sure. See, he does not know the capabilities of, like... Yeah, no, no problem. A, yeah, no. Um, he's got no idea what he's up against, but he is convinced... Like, he's attempting to convince uh, I, Funny Iceman, Primaveral, that he is 100% certain. So, there's another bit of... Uh, uh, another little um, pause as the eye contact is re-established and you're regarded in a different light. And with sort of this heave forward, the Primavera leans off of the shelf that he had raised to sit, sit back against. And his head gets closer to you, just in proximity, as he says, If you find a way, I will let you kill me first. All right. Um. So. Huh. I've got an option here that I'm considering. Roll insight. All right. Um. Sure. Why not? Uh. Because Cecil would try it. That is the thing. I don't yeah. think it's gonna go well. But I'm excited to see. All right. Where's insight? First roll of the game. Insight, insight, insight. If I can find it, jeez. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot that I expertised insight. That's fun. Um, so, what you immediately get is that this Primavera does not fear death at all. And fighting against it has been one of the most tiring things he's ever been through. And if you find a way to fix this problem without him having to oversee it, then that makes his life a lot easier. Well, death a lot easier. Hmm. The plan has always been, after all, to take him out at the very end. 
Yeah. And Cecil kind of looks at him and is like, thinking about it now. That would just make things too easy for you. You're in the shit show with us. You hear this, like, this, this chuckling sort of cackle that sounds like ice breaking together as he leans back against the shelf and says, ah. Too good to be true, then. Shall I send you off? Before you do, I... Well, I guess it's not my place to say, Master, but, um... Consider being a bit more amicable towards Amalia. I mean, she can give you much more than what you've got now. Or at least, whatever half of you has. I've decided I don't want it. Oh, that's just precious. Get me the hell out of here. Uh, your vision starts to black out from the borders into the center. And you, uh, you wake up, your head's been propped up on this really nice pillow, like on a love seat by yourself. Um, looks like your clothes have been cleaned through whatever means, and it smells like a few different kinds of incenses in this dimly lit foyer. Let me change the music real fast. Cecil just kind of mumbles himself, mumbles to himself. It's like, oh, fantastic! We just set up camp at a f***ing brothel. Um, as he sits up and looks around. Hey, Cecil. Hey! Uh, so... Did we win? Uh, did we die? What's going on? alive. The Primavera's not looking that great. Yeah, I noticed. I was gonna try to fix him up, but then I got zooped out of there. Uh, well, why would you go and do that? I mean... Because I could? Yeah. I suppose that's just a praxis. Um, is everyone else alright? I don't know, I just woke up. I think they are. And Cecil looks around, um, and stands up. Uh, begins to search around for the rest of the party. I believe everyone should be there. Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Everyone's there, so never mind. Cecil just, like, looks at everyone. They seem alright. None of them seem d dead or dying. Um, and it's like, Cecil, like, looks around and is like, I... Did we... Did we find Sentra? No, we did not um, find Sentra. Thanks to someone I know. And he looks over at Virgil with, like... Kind of an understand... Like, he's... Un, like, an understandable... Uh... Like, frustration. Just at the... Just at the shit that happened. But... He... Sighs and leans back into the chair, actually. Like, he slumps back down into it. It's like... Where to from here? Sayako looks pretty pensive from where she's sitting. Uh, somewhere near the entry of this place. Definitely seems like she's got something on her mind. So as you ask this question, Cecil, the furnace arium that I mentioned earlier, looking very elegant, approaches this time with a tray and says, I thought you'd be waking up sometime soon, so I thought I would uh, put it in my good graces to bring you all drinks. As for who are you, I'll, I'll get to that. Just give me okay. a second. She sets it on a small coffee table in the middle of all of your couches and sits in her own like little chair. Cross, excuse me, their their own little chair as they cross one of their legs over the other, and they say, "Leaving probably isn't a very good idea, given the." Um, public perspective on foreigners here, both by denizens of Nostos that's the wrong term inhabitants of Nostos as well as the populace from the Bastio district have you have some sheet metal I can wrap around my arm to look like a local <laughs> I'm not sure but I think that might be a bit racist probably but I'm too actually no you're right there's not much of an excuse for that but, aside from that, uh, god, uh, 
Well, what are they gonna do? Shoot on sight? We can probably just go to where we have to. Uh, no, they they will do that. What? Why? Let's I just say this place is a little, um... It Crazy. protects its own. Right. Crazy. Well, it's easy. Well, its existence is fairly unstable, right? If I understand it. Why do you say that? Oh, I don't know. The fact that the fact that it's fused together with uh, Jericho, and the only thing keeping it together is the guy who keeps uh, throwing himself into fights. So I don't think. think you have a very good idea of what's going on here. And none of that really made sense to me. Who's this person you're speaking of? Guy we... Well, the guy we just fought at the station? You know? Yeah, good old, good old Razorface. Yeah, he's got nothing to do with any of this. <clears throat> Alright, well, you know, yeah, you're probably no, right. Well, no. hold, hold, hold on. Before before you go running off, which your tone implies, I do have a solution. It just ties you to us a little bit. Us being this place. You see, in this, uh, this city where you're going to be shot on sight, as you so elegantly put it, this isn't a very lawful establishment. I call it Lagoon. And, um... It's a bit of a moxie club. And we've got here an Emilite Inversity Matrix. And as they say this, their body like folds up out of being a Furnace Arium and turns them into a Noctian that looks very similar to Asalia. Oh, it's a Transformer! <laughs> Pretty similar. Well that's uh, some, uh, some impressive machinery you've got there, honestly. It's How did we do it? The belt. And with your help, helping me with a few things that have been uh, thorns in my side thus far, I'll let you use it. Well, with that in mind, um... All right, so I've got a bit of an idea, um, and he, he says that not to the Ariam, but to the rest of the party, uh, as he leans forward and is like, you can do the chores, I suppose, for the, um, for the, for the, uh, fine person here. I can, I, I'm fairly confident that I can sneak through. I don't know if I'll necessarily need to use glamour, he says kind of irreverently, as he stands up, and is like, I need to find Sentra as soon as possible. I feel like this is a bit of a waste of time for me. They... You don't have a fucking clue where he is. Yep. You're damn right, thanks to someone. So you think your best option is to run off in a city that will have you shot on sight, and just run around until what, you stumble over him randomly? Well, running around in a city that's violent is basically what I did before I met our motley crew, so I'm not exactly adverse to it. No, oh, the, uh, the citizens aren't the only things you have to worry about, by the way. Oh, well, I mean, uh, let me do my homework, tell me. Uh, they coyly smile at you and say, No, you can just uh, sneak on by, right? Yeah, I think I can. Why so much animosity with, with that one? And they I'm... nod to Virgil. He shot down my only chance of finding a good friend of mine. Okay, well, I've left you with the drinks. I'm not going to get uh, associated in family matters. Do we have to pay with do we have to pay for these? Of course not. Oh. God, what a host is what what a what a host I would be if you had to pay for the drinks. But could you show show me could you show me where the mechanism that you used before, please? Uh, uh, they look at you like you're stupid, Catherine, and then leave. Amalia, Amalia holds up a hand just before you. Just out of curiosity, make it. Why? Clear. All right then. Why are you helping us? You're friends with Asalia, right? 
you know, I didn't think it would be suspicious that you were transforming into her shape. So you know what, Salia? Oh no, I transformed into the Arium. Yes, I know Asalia. And then they leave. Uh, Cecil just kind of looks around and is like, my apologies. I am not in a fantastic mood. Um, probably acted a bit brash there, but honest to God, I'm just... Ugh. I just want to get the hell out of here. Again? Meanwhile, I'm still Thanks. looking for the, uh, for the mechanism. Mechanisms she mentioned. I yeah, said what, please. I thought that was Amalia supposed said? to get people to like you. <laughs> According to genius <sighs> over there. First off, thanks for the compliment. Second off, I think in this particular case, if we want to move around the sea on a peed, we might have to do what she wants. Hey. Hey. Fine. That's the stupid chores. All right. We should have just kicked the sort of treatment You know what? It's fine. You know what? It's all. From right. although, if you want, from when Razorface was saying, here's that Sentra is in good hands with them. Good hands to Razorface could be anything but. You know what? Never mind. You know what? The barrel of a gun is good hands to that man. I'm not exactly convinced that, you know, that's fine. Yeah, you know, I'll do oh, you don't have to, for the you don't, have to, you don't have to trust him, but from the looks of it, he cares something about Sentra as well, so it's not yeah. in his best interest to watch him die. True, yeah, but I mean, people caring for one another can just... Never, you know what, yeah, you're right. Let's just do the chores for the crazy people and get the hell out of the city, hopefully with Sentra in one piece. So, what are Sayako, Kane, and Virgil up to? Uh, uh, Virgil's not here. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> am. Uh, is here. Why are you, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as soon as drinks are presented, uh, Sayako definitely helped herself to one because she could use one after all of this. It's very sweet, and you, you taste the tinge of alcohol, but you can't quite place the flavor. It seems quite foreign. Uh, she scrunches her face <laughs> in an inscru inscrutable expression. Uh, just sets it down and, uh, who, who's, who's nearby? Is Amalia uh, nearby? Is yeah, Amalia is there. Uh, so after she sets it down, she's like, I believe we should, uh, there's a manner I'd like to address here. Oh, and I'll have to oh, follow yeah. up about that thing that I came up here for. Uh, I'll have to do that, but, uh, currently. Oh yeah, how are you doing? You were, um, smushed at the start. You alright? Oh, um, nothing a burst of magic couldn't mitigate. Anyway, no, uh, don't worry about me. We're, alright. <sighs> Having taken some time to study this place, um, I had my suspicions, but they've all but been confirmed. The uh, goings-on in the world as a whole. Yes? Yeah. Thank you. Have to follow up with that, uh, with Fenica. Um, the goings-on in the world as a whole. Um, you know these planes that are intruding into our world, right? Well, they're not entirely planes, like they're on the same plane level as our one, but oh. yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Currently, it is messing with a sort of teeter-totter balance. Um, between Nazareth and Canaan. And currently, Nazareth and Canaan are out of balance. This much I have been able to glean. 
the existence or plane or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the one in Nazareth is destroyed. Um, one of the one of these existences is missing. Um, I suspect that would be uh, this Nostos be the missing one. Uh, she claps her hands together, um, her big billowy sleeve sort of swishing as she does, and then she like points her fingers at the group. So right now we need to figure out how to fix the imbalance. That is, that should be a priority here. Um, Nostos, wherever it is, needs to stop being where it is. And, uh, that big, uh, horrendous plane over Canaan. Canaan. That needs to be... That needs to go kaput. It needs to go goodbye. Basically, we need to destroy it. That should fix a lot of balances in the world right, right now. If we're able to accomplish that. So... I'm not entirely sure how feasible that is. I am... Um... If I knew how to split the planes apart, uh, generals would not be in the state of this. Roll <sighs> Arcana, Amalia. Um, the state, the relationship between the Chairs District and Ananaim, the place that got fused down onto it is not actually that unique of a problem as you remember back to uh, one of your history books. Way back in Tybalt's time, and Kidu dealt with a similar sort of place called the Feywilds. So maybe if you can somehow get an audience with him, he can fix it. Assuming he's still alive. The material uh, plane is still intact. I would hope he's still alive. Well, so, Saigo, so Saigo, what you're proposing would require, like, do you know who the, the paragon of the material world is? I'm gonna roll history on that. Uh, it's something that, that, sh that uh, 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 Sage in the Shadows would have taught you about. Alright. Through, through just describing what he is in relation to the world. So, don't roll history? Yeah, it's just somebody that's probably stronger than him and encompasses the same nature. Do I have a name? Um, and Kidu. Ah. And Kidu. So, we have to bargain with that one. Yeah. Memory, my memory of my history books is any. In the memory of my history books is any indication uh, he's uh, not generally one for bargains. Hmm. Um, can Veldana chip in at this point? Um, hmm. Veldana well, has... Well. Veldana... If she's paying as close attention as she can, it is, it's, she, she can understand, but it's like talking through, through like a veil of water. It's foggy and, and distant. But yeah, she can chip in. All right, so she's going to grab Cecil because that's the closest uh, link she has, most direct link. Mm -hmm. Hey, so. This Enki dude that they're talking about, I know. We met before. Not surprising. But they get together like a big paragon um, meeting every so often, but um, I don't remember who I am. So, what are you proposing? Do you do you want do you, do you want us to? You know, flaunt you off like you're some sort of trophy? Do you want to talk to him? Well, then thinks for a second if 
bringing up Veldana to Enkidu is going to improve a situation. I mean, yeah, no, 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 Cecil continues, it's like, usually when I brought up with friends, um, people usually either cringe or hide in fear, so I'm not exactly enthused at the idea of letting them, you know, discuss anything with you. What's the, ra what's the ratio for that? Uh, so far it's been, uh, all that, actually. I've not met someone who's pleased to no, see no, I mean, you. I mean, what's the ratio of, uh, what you put? Cringe to fear? Ah, uh, probably mostly cringe. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. This is what I get for trying to make changes after Orson. You know, whenever someone saw Orson, I was just, it wasn't it. Oh, look, it's Orson. Look at him. It's more, ah, fuck, it's Orson. We're going to fucking die. Yeah, something along right. those lines. This is what I get for being nice. I mean, no one asked you to. Cecil, I... you have possibly changed the world for the worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's fine with that. Um... What's new with that? Alright, so, so the real question is there like communication between Paragons can Veldana actually? Um, I'll go I'll go over that with you later. It's gonna be a long term sure. thing, but I will make the clock and hide it. So sure. uh, after this happens You all collectively remember that Cyrus exists. Oh, Cyrus! He exists! Oh. Sorry, I don't. Uh, can I roll for that? Roll history. Alright. Uh, damn. Damn, it was like six. who? It was a DC of 5, so... It was a DC of 3. It's a DC of 7. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Never mind. Uh, Cecil is like who? <laughs> ah, the, the lad uh, that we left back on the... Oh... Ooh. <laughs> Sarako cringes as she realizes that they all left him behind. We should probably get on be, that. In my oh, defense, I, I, was a, I was a little busy I at the time. <sighs> Wait, you left him? Kind of? No, he didn't follow. No, he, we did leave him. He did not follow us. There's a very big difference. Well, you probably move a bit faster than his tiny little legs can carry him. In fairness to me, Virgil says chipperly, I can't see anything, so I didn't know he was following or not. Oh my god, you can't- oh my god, you can't see anything. In fairness to me, I didn't care about him in, in the first place. Shall I go retrieve him? Yeah. I guess. Probably a uh, decent yeah. idea. Uh, Sayako oh, yeah. gets up and she pr produces her uh, disguised self mask and slips it on. All right, so um, as you walk towards the grand front doors, they open autonomously as you get within probably like six to ten feet, and they lead out to these glistening gold bridges that are very, very gently bobbing in the air far above the rest of the city. These are the bridges that you took to, um, to get here, and in the distance, some of them change positions to cut off and grant access to some different buildings. Looks like a very easy place to get lost in and or cut off from everything you're familiar with. Oh boy. Well, uh, she's still going to try and make her way back to where she thinks the lift is. Alright, so you, uh, you, as you move through the, uh, the gate of this, not the gate, the doorway, the threshold, as you pass this threshold, your item is rendered inert and the disguise fades. Alright, so basically just ears and tail just pop up out of nowhere, hair fades back to white. Uh, she takes the mask off and she shakes it a bit, frustrated. And she's like, stupid. So this, this mask is magic in nature, and this isn't the first time this has happened. You realize there must be some some pretty pretty uh, decently sizable reserves of Emilis nearby to be having this effect. And then you realize that Wait a minute. This city is made of Emilis. Her, uh, yeah, her shoulders sag at that realization. And 
She was wondering why her tails were lacking that floofiness that they should have, and uh, <laughs> lack of magic is probably the cause of that as well. <laughs> Still going? Um. Um. Uh, bu- 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 uh, her psycho, sort of... her psycho pride thing to do. <laughs> Is this is what this pride? Is this, <laughs> this is the sort of shoot on sight sort of place. Then uh, she's gonna go back and be like, "Okay, well, change of plans. Turns out I can't just si- simply slip through into the uh, city because all oh, right, of- these whole places made of- <laughs> oh shit." Yep. Hmm. Well, is this Hey, Cecil, you know how you wanted to go outside? Yeah. I'll get him. So, Psycho, as you're walking in, um, the doors close and then open again behind you as another party approaches the building. And then they come in, and none of them seem to pay you any mind as they do, but you recognize their outfits. And by you, I mean everyone that's seen Asalia. They are wearing Bloodhunter clothes. And they seem to be, um, they are striding with purpose as they move towards the staircase and ascend into a different room. Well, um... Alright, why the hell is everyone wearing this? Yeah, it's a bit odd. Um, I'm, I'm actually still fine with at least going to get, um, Cyrus, considering that he's a bit more of a reasonable goal. All right, that it's seems probably like probably make sure he doesn't fall off the place. And it seems like a safe enough risk. Yeah, I'll be back, or maybe not. Who knows at this point? Fuck it. Um, as he <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, Virgil can try and unblind himself. That's It'll go good. away in about mm, six hours. Honestly, it'd be kind of funny if he just stayed like that. Anyways, um. He said before and opening the door and leaving. All right, so Cecil sits off. Go ahead and roll stealth, I assume. Yup. All right. Um, and, uh, unless you like to live dangerously. Almost in tandem with Cecil's departing footsteps, you hear the approaching footsteps of someone that reveals themselves to once again be Fenica as yeah. they walk in and sit back in their chair. They're now holding like half a little sandwich. They brush some crumbs off the sides of their of their cheek. They say, we um thought about my offer. Oh, you're missing one. We're actually yeah. missing two. Uh, they do a quick head count and they say, it's two. There's someone I forgot to pick up. Uh, well, he's, he's on they the were hiding. right now. Hmm. He was hiding in the lift. Yeah. Once again, behavior that just won't do for a host. I'll send someone to help your friend. Cecil has already went to try and find them. If so, we're going to just see you. That is what I intuited, yes. I mean, if you'd like to, you know, try to help... Around here, we could use all the help we could get. You're probably not going to get shot on sight. So you're... So the... Alpha you're wearing seems very familiar. Oh. Well, this used to be a home away from home for the Blood Hunters. I'm assuming that's what you recognize it from. It has since been co opted into the operating base of, well, what I call the Lagooners, which is free name Arium that want to separate Nostos from Jericho or figure out how to usurp the scientist. Hey, scientist is oh, cool. Eh? Oh, is uh, they, sh- they shoot you a lot, and they say, "Yeah, try not to say that kind of thing around here, or maybe I'll kick you out myself." I so give me a see. frantic look. So I'm guessing that the scientist has done something. Presumably, he, he is somehow responsible for these the two planes merging. Nail on the head with that one. Maybe it was an experiment? So we could just experiment on how to unmerge him. I mean. Well, judging by his designation, 
I would say you're onto something. Oh my god, what was that? What? Just scream. Hey! Yeah. So, uh, Amalia is. She's going to raise her. She's going to say, well, at well, least, um. Kavina is what we call a unique outcome. Anyway. What exactly right, is it? What is it exactly that you would like us to do? Well, um, I've been expecting someone in particular back, and with them information, and they haven't returned. So, I'm going to show you on our nifty little maps here, where they likely flipped out of existence. You're going to go investigate for me, and then you're going to tell me what happened. Best case scenario, you bring them alive and the information intact. Worst case scenario, both are lost. I will still uphold my end of this bargain. So, am I like so bad? Alright, so in that case, that'll be. That'll have to be me, Sayako, and. Sayako Kane and. Kavi. Virgil is blind and. Well, I'm not quite sure what I can do in this place. Obviously, you would need to make use of the MLI adversity matrix in order to operate while doing me this favor. And so I would allow temporary use. Of the MLI university <laughs> mat... What? He's the thing that they use to disguise themselves. Yeah. What are you rolling uh, inside on, Shani? Um, trying to figure out if we could, could you know, get figure out from context, you know, like some of how it works or something. Um. Yes, you do figure out some context for how it works. Like Fenica said earlier, the device itself is the tower that you're in, and so um, using it. You need to be on the inside. Um, it does seem to be temporary in nature. That's not something Fenica brought up, so it's probably not that urgent, or it's long-term enough where it shouldn't matter to this mission. And uh, it does it does kind of tell you that you can't just use it and fuck off and never come back, though. Um, as well as it's, it's way bigger than anything you've ever you've ever like it's super advanced like this uh this, this, this doesn't disguise you or, or it, it might be able to both disguise you up to true polymorph you like this this mechanism is insane right so i can't hack into it um you might be able to hack into it if you find a console but you have to find a console you're in a foyer right now with a bunch of couches and drinks Alright, well, also I'm gonna keep my eye out, out for anything count console like. Also, you're a biologist. Well, yeah, but I'm also an artificer, so. I have an interest in that stuff, too. Shani has worked with MLS before as well. Um, Fenica. Yes, my dear. There is one question I want to uh, ask you. You can ask as many questions as you like. Well,. This one's particularly important. It's part of why I'm with this group and up here. And she, she just kind of twirls her wrists. Uh, I'm, I'm currently looking for a artifact. Um, just kind of clicking her tongue. Da -da -da. Trying to find the name of it again because I'm bad with names. Sayaka just gets out a bunch of bunch of shoddily stored scrolls and is frantically like reading through them. Ah, right. Um, a fragment of something called Zealous. Doesn't ring a bell. At all? Roll insight. Okay. I think we established last time that Amali doesn't know what the fuck that is either. Yes, we did. Great. In sight. There we go. Um, 
They there is a bit of a flirty light in their eyes. They say this. They absolutely have an idea of what that is, but this is not an egg so easily cracked. Oh well, if uh, something should come about that uh, you hear about it, you I'd will be, be the first to know. Let yeah. us pray that we are on cordial circumstances when that happens. And they take a bit of a sip from their drink. She just kind of does a little quick eyebrow raise and uh, looks at the rest. Well, we have our tasks, and uh, I'd hate to disappoint our host. Well, I've got to show you where it probably happened. And they get up. If you're all ready to follow me and leave your poor crippled friend here to my attendants. Virgil? How many of your, how many, how many of your treatments do you have left? I could still shoot up a one or two of them, surely. One, perhaps. Molly is just looking at him for a second and is like, actually, if you, you're probably better just handing it to me and then I'll administer it myself. He's not like, this is it. It's, so. not that I, it's not that I don't trust your medical skills, it's that I would rather you not operate on me while you're blind. Yes, well, be careful. Which one do you want? Do you want the... You want, you want the good shit. You always want the good shit. Which pocket do I keep it in? This one. I'm always just looking at this slip. Like, Looking at him from where and is like, this is just sad. He actually like reaches into the pocket where he keeps his good shit and produces it pretty flawlessly once he actually finds the pocket. Yeah, it's, it's just the fumbling around that's, that makes her just momentarily shift to pay just because Virgil can't see. It's best if used right through the vein on the forearm. Yeah, you. I suppose in desperate times you could drink it, but I wouldn't recommend it. You, you've stuck me with it off. And there is just like a mark of her arm where you keep stabbing her. All right, and well, you like it? Fenica leads all of you, including Virgil, or they're leaving you behind. They are leaving me behind. Alright, so Virgil, you should stay on the couch. Everyone else, you are led... Um, Good luck! A few, a few corridors that are as decorated as poshly as the foyer. And then, almost immediately, you go through a door and the scene shifts to this... to this much more... Um, much more stark and brutalistic kind of construction of, of this sleek... this sleek, like... like like concrete with um with these rows of of dark black machinery very heavily constructed through emolite procedures and um you're you're led past a few of these rows towards a uh, towards a very large central table uh that that has a that has a big space above it and then some kind of projector dangling from the ceiling and a three-dimensional facsimile of Nostos is projected in this space above this circular, this circular, uh, circular table. And Fenica, almost pulling at it with their hands, starts to zoom in in a few particular areas. And uh, relatively complex path leading through the city to the other side, past a massive factory seems to be the direction you're going to be going. To be perfectly upfront, I mentioned a uh, few other threats than just the populace here. There's, uh... Well, there's three that you'll have to worry about. There's the Shifteds, the Fullies, and the Golems. Golems are collections of corrupted emolite. Pretty cut and dry, simple. Do they uh, steal? Do they steal people's rings? 
they smash people, they um, pull them apart and eat them and convert them into the mineral of their own construction. They're mindless, don't feel bad about killing them, but good job if you do manage to. Quite strong, those ones. The Fullies are, I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with how Arium work. They are Arium that have completed hearts. Treat them with extreme care. They can uh, see through the Emelite University Matrix. And the Shifteds are Arium that have the unfortunate circumstance of not quite coming all the way through when the Bastio District and Nostos merged. So they look uh, a bit half and half. And um, we don't really have a name for them, but the, the spooky black misty stuff. Ah. Oh, that's a good name. Excellent. Uh, so. so once again, Shifteds, Fullies, and Golems. They hold up three fingers as they describe each of them. Sayako is counting on her own fingers, shifted, just mouthing shifted Foley's golems, trying to commit this to memory. The individual uh, you're going to be looking for, his name is Creaning. And Creaning. God bless his heart if he's dead. The information he was after was coming out of that factory that you're moving past. It has to do with uh, an individual named Dr. Paract. Dr. Barak. Remember, all your job is is to figure out what happened. I uh, have my way of seeing through lies, so don't think this is going to be as easy as that, but I do have quite a bit of confidence in you, seeing as how you were able to survive an encounter with a razor face. Actually, before you go, I do have a question about that. Mm hmm. Why are the two of you at odds? Long story. Hmm. I only asked well, like, because Razor Face. He, su he successfully stabbed me in the back and he didn't take. I'm looking to return the favor. Fenneca gives a, a nod of. of acceptance before saying well um just another just another barb to watch over your shoulders for the lagooners here it's not unheard of us it's not unheard of for us to be working with him to my knowledge it's not happening right now but he may drop by he was certainly insistent on us not coming in well that's none of my business Get lost. What? <laughs> All right. Directing to the directing to the point. Fair enough. So, um, as you guys get to the exit of this of this, uh, what almost looks like a server room. Uh, yeah, Catherine, you you can see what is likely a console that may connect to the Emelite University Matrix, but you can't be sure. It's just a big console. Okay, well, I'm going to keep my eye out the whole time for things that look like consoles. No problem. As you as you come through the door back into the more posh corridors, there is a Bloodhunter there waiting for you, and they're carrying a small panel in their hand, and they say, you'll be using the Matrix to traverse the streets, yes? That's correct. We'll be going one by one. Tell me your preferred forms, and I'll calibrate them. Hmm, we got a choice. Um, you first. Mm, tall fellow, whitish hair. He gestures to you, Kane. Advisable to look like an Arium, however, if you'd like to uh, do something a little more particular, I can transform you into one of the inhabitants of Nostos. What do they? What do they look like? Oh. Uh, uh, I don't suppose you would have seen them on the way over, would you have? They're a little bit insecty, except large. 
What was that, sir? He yeah. looks back to you, Kane. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Not the first time I've given him my body to look like something else. Temporary as it is. It is temporary, right? <laughs> I'm hearing random button. Random? The uh, look of amusement comes to his face. Kane grins. Ooh, I want random! I want right. random! I'll roll real fast for the both of you. <laughs> and that's for Kane. <laughs> Well, wow. Shawnee. All right, you both turn into hydraulic Arium, and uh, uh, you guys okay with gender swapping? <laughs> sure. Sure. All right, Kane, you turn into a female hydraulic Arium, and uh, Catherine, you transform into a male hydraulic Arium. Um. Huh. I always wondered what it would be like to be standing up. Holy shit, that's statistically improbable. <laughs> you are both you are both five percent biological, so you're very largely robotic. Twinsies. Um, Adan. Wow. Zakikro is is like that crazy. Is like morphed into into your your right arm as like a, a built-in blade that can be retracted and used traditionally or being used as like a punch sword um uh amalia watches this happen like the randomizer on that thing broken catherine the uh the dude shakes the con shakes the remote a little bit um catherine your cucumber gun is Interpolated into your being, and now you can fire the uh, the uh, the gunflower shells from your left hand, and the cucumbers from your right. All right, that's pretty cool. But wait, will the will the cucumber acid do anything against oriums? Mm, yeah. All right. Yeah, it'll do a lot against oriums. You also, additionally, both of you have the uh, the capacity to if you like stand still you can jump really really high and really really far for one jump by putting all the hydraulic pistons in your legs to work it's not quite flight but you can traverse really high things and really far chasms using it which could very well be useful here in this city um all right does it have a recharge time or nope you just have to be standing still for a bit nice all right and uh malia you come up next and what is your preference Thanks for a second. I will take... I'll be an Aurum as well, but I would prefer to be... Lightning Aspect. Ah! Good old Brass Ariums. And, um... You get transformed into a Brass Arium. How much bio biology would you like to, uh... Would you like to maintain? Percentage um... Make it um seven percent tech. Yeah, the their furnace arm. Seven percent biology? Seventy. Seven uh, fairy fair fairy biology, seventy percent robot. Uh the settings happen and um Do you guys wanna describe yourselves? What does a hydraulic orium look like? Like what a hydraulic orium is powered by by steam powered pistons. And, and like, uh, I guess, like, I think, I think it's mostly, what was it? No, 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 brass, brass is hydraulic, gold is electric. Excuse me. So, the two of you, Kane and Catherine, the two of you are brass Arium. Amalia is a gold Arium. Does, does the brass ever, like, turn, wait, no, wait, it's copper that turns green. Yes. Does the brass you can, ever turn You can have it? copper, you can have copper. Basically... Something to match my hair. <laughs> that's adorable. Yeah. Is, is the hair the 5% biology that's maintained? Yes! Yes! You're a robot with some funky green hair. Hold on, are you suggesting that 5% of a human body is hair? No, I'm not saying, lot of hair? I'm saying Basically. That that's, that's, shut up, Cecil. Uh, <laughs> Kane, what do you look like? I guess everything's robotic but the face. I don't know. Um, oh, so so you look like uh, you look like uh, like Ryzen? 
Yeah. Or, or Genos, yeah. Um, Amalia, I forgot. Your thing is that you can short out machinery using electricity. Uh, in addition, you can add 1d4 lightning damage to melee attacks you make. Excellent. Next down the line comes Sayako. Uh, she's gonna roll Arcana on all this transfiguration that's going on. Go ahead. Uh, squinting her eyes because a lot of it seems sus. Um, boo. There's certainly no illusory magic happening. So from this, she can she can garner that this is like complete transformation, not just yeah. illusions like her mask is. It's and then she she kind of gets a little squeamish at the idea of her body be tur turning into metal. Uh, she she looks at the person and she's just got this nervous, stricken expression on her face. You can always stay with your blind friend. Uh, we, we are quite cushy here. Uh, uh, she life. looks. <laughs> she looks at Amalia. <laughs> and uh, then back are, at this person. He's, he's either being a robot fox or an insect. <laughs> what do you prefer? Uh, about how biology, biological, can I get with this? As much as you want. Um, yeah, except for a hundred, I suppose. Uh, and they they reach up and move an, an eye patch away, and it turns out they are an REM. They just have a cybernetic eye. Uh, <sighs> robot right. tails, robot tails. Her, uh... <laughs> Do I That'd be kind of cool. Random? She, she, she just like fucking just jumps back like uh, no not the random button please um uh I'll take a I'll, I'll take a robot arm oh I like that and what of your tails we'll have to hide those unfortunately and the ears will have to be hidden too Yokai kind of stand out around these parts, it seems. Are you sure? I don't think it would get any... any questioning stares. <sighs> she kind of, like, side glances, and then she's like, I think it's better safe than sorry. All right. I think I've got something in mind. Won't be able to take them away, but... And uh, they're going to turn you into... You want furnace, electric, or hydraulic? Um, furnace is fire, right? Yeah. I think that's more fitting of her to be a furnace. Alright, so your tails fold back into metallically, like, segmented panels. And they're still tails, but you are immediately aware of... Uh, of a capability they now have to like wrap around you in like this disguise that that doubles as like a like almost a dress slash kimono and your ears can just fold down like metal panels you also get the right the right um cyborg arm like you said oh god this feels weird so when your tails are wrapped around you as if they were clothing you gain a plus three to your ac and when you punch with your cybernetic arm, uh, you can cause a small explosion, dealing 2d10 fire damage in a 5-foot radius around you. Baller. That said, if you get <laughs> doused, you get stunned. Not so baller. <laughs> um... All right, so she looks at her uh, mechanical arm. She sort of rotates it left and right. She watches as the panels on it expand outward in like small jets of flame, just whoosh. And she's like, ah, that's going to take some getting used to, but uh, shouldn't raise too many eyebrows with this. And I didn't miss anybody, right? Kane, Amalia. Nope. Um, Cecil's doing his own thing. Virgil is currently incapacitated for the time being. Uh, I don't think so. 
It's true. So, Cecil, you leave this place, and Cecil does leave this place. What are you doing as you step out the door onto the uh, onto the entrance to the ballast bridges? Well, if it ain't broke, uh, he's going to try and sniff for Cyrus. You sniff for Cyrus, and all you get back is metal, metal he and kinda, rust. Kind of cringes, and he's just like, "Ugh." Um, but the lift, the lift is a pretty like where we were was pretty identifiable, so that's not a big deal. Eh, um, might not be. Looks the same color as a lot of the other buildings. Roll a roll a perception or investigation check. This is not this is not uh, olfactory. Where's perception? There it is. Doing anything to that? Uh, yeah, I'll push it. Okay. So with a twenty, that is a persuasion. What? You rolled persuasion. Oh, you can take you can take uh, what you have. No, no, you fine. I'll use perception. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Much better. Do you want to push that? Uh, yeah. No, I think I do. Fuck you. Um. Yeah. 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 So you you see seven lifts that match the uh, that match the description and and kind of general location of the one that you arrived on, and. At first, you're like, well, fuck, there's literally nothing differentiating them until you see just the tiniest sliver of a lift in one of their bays. And oh. seeing as how you guys were, are, are the only people that have arrived in a long ass time, it has to be that one. Yeah, makes sense. It's quite far away. It's probably going to take you um, the way you came about an hour to get there. You might be able to, to get some, uh, to, to open some shortcuts though. That said, these ballast bridges that you're on top of are about 300 feet above the city beneath, where there are a plenty of winding, plenty of winding corridors, like through the alleyways of much smaller buildings. Um, in the distance, you see currently non-accessible by the network of bridges that you're currently on, uh, what looks to be some kind of elevator or staircase that leads down to their depths. So you need to find some way to move the bridges yourself the way that you've seen them moved in the distance to get access to that. Hmm. Uh, is there anything that looks remotely like a control? Well, investigation. Yeah. Uh, investigation. Um, that's a... Hey! A 14 isn't terrible. So you look around. There's nothing immediately around you. There's the railings. There's the there's the street lights. There's the very finely crafted roads. Um, there's no controls around here, but you do kind of see in the distance, probably uh, 500, 600 feet away, what looks like it could be a small little gazebo that might have controls inside of it. You'd have to go closer to check. I see. Okay. Well, uh, that's where Cecil's going. Uh, he. Uh, starts to haul ass over that way, uh, and I'm assuming without trouble he makes it to the funny little gazebo. Or is it is it blocked by anything? Are you doing so stealthily? Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna roll stealth. I'm just assuming that like. So how are you moving stealthily? These uh these these ballast bridges have are are basically 100 percent illuminated by these street lights. And there's are... very little space to move behind the. So do lights. the ballast bridges move? Yes, they change configuration. Like, almost constantly? Every so often? Like... Um, they haven't since you've left the building. Alright, and some someone could feasibly uh, be on the side of one of the said ballast bridges, right? Yeah, there's definitely enough machine to, like, climb along. It's a little yeah. precarious, but you could do it. So... Cecil, uh, using Death in the West as a prehensile limb, basically, in, like, sticky situations like this, uh, kind of partially skirts along, like, the bottom of, uh, of the bridge, or bridges, I suppose, um, and just is, like, using his legs to stabilize himself and using Death in the West wrapped around his waist and using the actual blade as, like, a hook, being the, one of the few things that actually, like, tether him to the bridge. All right, so you, you make your way fairly easily. This is not the first time you've moved like this. However, as you get closer and closer to this small gazebo-like structure connecting, it's at like a 90 degree angle between two of the bridges. 
Um, you hear some distant voices coming from on top, above you. Ah. And one of them has like the this weird clicking intonation to it, while the other one sounds like just a person. Okay. And um, hmm. these people might be guarding it, because they're not really moving. Alright. Um, Cecil precariously goes... Uh, actually, no, you know what? Uh, how illuminated is, is the gazebo wreathed in shadow? Um, no, the gazebo is very well lit. All right, great. Uh, so, uh, Cecil, uh, goes invisible thanks to Umbral Armor. Um, and climbs up, and who are these two people? One of them looks, uh, it's, one of them has a lot of... I can only describe them as these metallic robes that are folded in this very thin metal. Uh, it kind of shines black, and this grasshopper head comes up out of the collar, except it's lined with, with what has to be like three rows of 36 eyes each, and and very many long antenna that come out of the back of the head and are all braided together in, uh, in, this, in this almost ponytail that is draped over its shoulder. It's got what seems to be just this nondescript metal rod in its arms. And um, next to it is a furnace arium. They both definitely look the type to be the guards. And uh, they're next to a console that conceivably does what you think it does. All right. Neither, neither of them are aware of you. Uh, Cecil immediately reaches for uh, Death in the West, but then, like, kind of eases up on the prospect as he, like, attempts to just, like, very, very deftly walk between the two of them as they're talking. Um. I'm expecting, I'm expecting this not to be easy, but a flex is a flex. It actually kind of is. You, uh, you move, you move through them. They're pretty idle. Neither of them are really expecting oh, cool. anything. That's pleasant. And as you're past and you can see down where the other ballast bridges lead, one of them does indeed connect to this tower that is likely some kind of elevator or staircase. Okay. Um, Cecil, I'm assuming he is at, or at least he is available to be at the control panel. Um, or is there... Mean? Well, okay, there's, there's, there's a control system, yeah? Yes, there's a control system here to move the bridges, but you don't need them to move right now. I see. Um, what Cecil... Okay, so... So, all I need to do is... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble kind of picturing the scene. Could um, Here you go. It's real easy. I'm gonna paint this in blue. You came from okay. here. You are here. There's okay. another road that goes here. Here's the tower you need to get to. Oh, okay. Right. So, okay, yeah, no, I thought it was way more complicated. Never mind. Nope. So Cecil just goes then there's not much to there's not much else to do um he is after i mean cyrus and there's not much here that is stopping him nope so you get to the tower and it is indeed a series of elevators actually and the interior of this tower is much more industrial than mm. the uh the, the veneer of wealth that is outside and along the ballast bridges there's the churning of machines in here that block out the noises that come from that come from outside, and it's much darker. And there's nobody really here except for the occasional pers uh, person um, occupying a small elevator as it as it slowly ascends, blipping lights signifying its its changing elevation. You make your way down some stairs, you get into an elevator of your own, and it's a relatively easy to understand control panel. Okay. However. It does seem as though the level of the main city, the one mm -hmm. that you need to get to, is the halfway point down. And there is a lot of stuff beneath there. So the risk here is being seen by, like, just, just due to circumstance, right? Yep, is someone noticing the elevator going down. However, the, uh, the elevators, you can't easily see what's inside, and so if somebody's mm -hmm. invisible, they would probably just assume that it's um, somebody small that they couldn't see through the gaps. And is going through the elevator the only way down? Unless you want to climb the machinery. Like I said, it's like 300 feet. Alright, fantastic. 
Um, yeah, no, um, Cecil does basically exactly that, or at least attempts to. Um, the machinery? Yep, for going the, foregoing the elevator, he takes out Death in the West and attempts to, like, just, like, the, the old, the old adage of just, like, sliding down something with some sort of hooked item, uh... Doing the Peter Pan! Yeah, yeah, there we go, doing the Peter Pan. So as you take out Death in the West, you notice a few things from now having, now having, uh, climbed, like, underneath the bridges with it. The points of contact that it was making, particularly, like, in the middle of the blade and a few of the portions that would be used as, like, bendy and bungee cord-style tendons. Yeah. It looks like some of the portions of Death in the West that would have made contact with this place are beginning to rot. Yeah. What's, what's the machinery made of? Um, the machinery in here is made of machinery. Uh, uh, metal. Yeah, it seems to be just some kind of basic iron, some steel. Um, Cecil kind of looks at it and is like, Ugh, now you decide to break. Can all right. Um, and he surprisingly pays it less mind than he probably should. Um, as he uh foregoes the 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 tell. All right. Um, and attempts to go anyways and um tries to slide down. Adding a clock to Cecil. Let's go. Um, is it successful? Um, yeah, he get down. It's pretty easy. However, I am going to tick this up. Good. I love it when clocks go up. It's my favorite thing. To Famalam. Death in the West rot. It's ticked up once from the bridge once from this. Uh, the rot does seem to be worse for wear as you get to the bottom, but you make your way out into the city alleyways and on top of one of the buildings to get your bearings and the lift only looks a short distance away. What would you like to do? Can I roll insight to see why it's rotting now of all times? Or is it just contact with metal? Is that like something that was pre-established? Go ahead and roll. Okay. This has never insight. happened through contact yeah, with metal. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, insight. Where are the... Okay, there it is. Wow, that's statistically unlikely. Wow. <laughs> Crit fails are not auto auto fails. Like an eleven. No, I know. I'm just saying. You take it. Um. Hit? What? No, I'm pushing it. One second. Um. I'm not letting well enough. Ever do you want to re? Long. Do you want to re-roll instead? No, 18's good. Honestly, I'm um, content with 18. Death in the West seems to have uh it seems to be from the portions of this place that are that come from nosos as opposed hmm. to uh just regular metal that's interesting uh and you go into the lift yep okay great you get to the lift there are a few people that are uh, working on disengaging the lift and sending it back where it came from there's a uh, there's a few people in these long black coats with these gold heads that are uh, they look pretty like dominating and with yes. them is a is a smaller person with a with a long white cloak and they seem to be examining the machinery and disengaging a lot of the electricity that allows this place to be powered. Um, what you're seeing right now is the uh, the depowering of a lift station. And the reason you know this is because you see in the corners of this of this building some of the metal start to fold and shift in on itself the same way it was doing back in the in the uh, Arca district. That's interesting. Um, you don't see Cyrus anywhere, uh, but you do smell a trail that he left in his haste to leave. And ah, very cool. It leads out the door you have just come through, and down into the depths of these alleys. And Cecil looks, takes a deep breath, kind of almost in a, almost like in a reverent sigh before being like, yep. And we move back to the rest. Yeah. All right, then. 
Uh, Sayaka was still, like, opening the jet portions of her mechanical arm and closing them. <laughs> as she's following the rest of the group. <laughs> yeah, I'm going he to say- She's pausing every once in a while and just jumping up. Because she yeah. can't. Yeah, I'm going to say, you want to pass yourselves off as people who have always been like this? Maybe don't be doing that. But why would she you looks... have always been like this? Why do you keep jumping up? I mean, you can! Why wouldn't you? Sayako just looks up at Amalia and just does it one more time while looking straight at her. <laughs> and then stops doing it. <laughs> huh. <sighs> it's a coping process. Hey, look, check out my muscles, guys. All right. We should get our heads in the game. Where are we going? So, you're now on the same ballast bridges that Cecil had just moved past. However, the bridge connecting to the console that Cecil traveled to has since been changed, and it is no longer there. Um, mm. It looks like there's a pretty clear there's a pretty clear gazebo little station that... Uh, you see the same gazebo station that Cecil passed the two guards at, and it looks like they have changed the construction of the bridges to accommodate... Um, traveling party in the far distance off to the east. Their um, roll investigation, Amalia. There is a hailing system alongside the rails of these bridges, and it looks like this hailing system does connect to this little gazebo. So, uh, after the people to the east are done getting to where they're going, it looks like you can talk to the guards and get them to reconnect the bridges to where you need to go, which is the same elevator tower that... Oh, wait, no, you're actually going in the opposite direction, but you do need the bridges to still change. You need to get behind the building you just left. Another rudimentary okay. map coming up. So we need to talk to the guards in order to get them to move. Bridge. I could. You guys need to get to here. And as Amalia is, and as Amalia is saying this, she just has a, a momentary realization. My accent is going to give the game away. Well, I could always be the one doing the talking. You're, you're going to have to. Or I could try and I could try and not just start, um, starts attempting to uh all the work better the next time guys, sorry. She's I'm always just uh, attempting to work the work an accent. Just hear her marring to herself. So basically, the plan right now is to flag down a guard and have them move the bridges for us. Uh, there's uh, a, there's, there's the a hailing part to get across. The hailing system looks like it connects electronically to the bridge control. It's not going to mm. get you there or get anyone else here. Oh. It's a, it's a long-range um, communication system. I see. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, she's going to approach and try to do that, I guess. So you um, essentially you take the uh, you take the a lever that's at the railing and you crank it down and you hear a microphone kind of buzz to life what do you say um hello fellow aria <laughs> <laughs> hello how do you gordon? do fellow kid hello gordon hello gordon <laughs> uh no um no i'm with the science team Amalia, no, Amalia, I'm just, just... Amalia just gestures where the bridge needs to go. Look, a rope! You can climb it! Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, the com, the com buzzes in and says, uh, uh, she, she, she's about to say something, she looks back at uh, Amalia and it's like, shh. 
shoot, we need a cover, don't we? Um. Are you still cranking the lever down? <laughs> well, she's saying this quietly towards okay, the Okay, alright. Alright, um, roll stealth. Bruh. You don't know how powerful the microphone is. That's... Alright, uh... Imagine I might have already that. botched this mission, I'm sorry guys. No, it's fine, it's fantastic. Do you want to re-roll that? Sure, I'll re-roll it. Are you using Stuart's or yours? I'll use mine. There we go. Maybe that's better. Uh, we need a cover story. Alright, well, we're off to look at some interesting... plants. I mean, no, wait, there's not a lot of plants. Console wires. There's some interesting console wires on the other side. We want to look at them. Uh, she right, opens her mouth. Just, just shaking her head. <laughs> just. But I do want to look at interesting console wires. All right. So she, so she, uh, with her hands still on the crank, she, uh, she clears her throat. And she says, "We're an engineer team. Uh, going this way to uh, inspect uh, some faulty circuitry." <laughs> Acknowledged patron name? Uh. <laughs> patron name? Uh, Malia. Guido's last name was Rasal. Rasal. Damn, Rasal. Uh, Rasal. Acknowledged. Uh, coordinates? Amalia just quickly does the maps and uh, points over and then just sort of takes out a spell book and writes down the Raw rough intelligence coordinates. check. Okay, yeah, sure, that's fine. Raw intelligence? Raw intelligence. Um, so you remember, just from the coordinates that were on the map layout that Fenica gave you all, uh, this roughly would be about 2326. 326. Oh, excuse me, 2326 72. 2326 72. Uh, X23, Y26, uh, Z72. Acknowledged. Stand by two minutes. <sighs> Man. Haven't these people just ever thought of maybe making just static bridges to cross? Yeah, but then you wouldn't get to do stuff with them because they just hang around. Interesting control wires. <laughs> you start just shaking your head. So. Oh, this was, a, this was a bad start. And the massive bridge to the west of Lagoon begins to straighten as it moves down to connect to the bridge that leads to the uh, the tower that you guys need to descend. <laughs> Eric, I just I, I'm a big fan. Whenever whenever there's a a, a large thing moving, it's always yeah. It's a good sound. So, um. You guys start making your way with the swagger of a Power Rangers team that tried on their costumes for the first time. The yeah, exaggerated well. swagger of a of a Super hmm. Sentai Ranger. Just, I'm just, it's just look, looking around and it's like I'm, I am slightly concerned about the fact that we have not seen any of the denizens of Nostros yet. You've seen the denizens of Nostros? Inhabitants of Nostros. Yeah. <sighs> it's a little disconcerting. Um... All we were told to look how far was the Aurum. Aurea. She did not, they did not say anything about the actual inhabitants. Mm. 
Yeah. Ooh, is that a console port over there? Uh, yes, there's plenty of console ports out here, but given that you've left the building, you're pretty sure they have nothing to do with the M light inversion matrix. Hmm. You wanna go fuck with one? Yes. Very All much. Right, so, Do we have time? Um, you could probably run ahead of the party and fuck with it while they catch up at their pace. Alright. Alright, guys! Uh, just gonna run ahead a sec. Well, wait. Eh. <laughs> Sanko reaches out as, uh, Kavi just goes on ahead by her own. And she looks at Amalia and it's like, ah. Hey, hey, well, hey, welcome to my world. How are you enjoying it so far? The, uh, the most, the most interesting console that is ahead of you, that you run towards, is fixated outside of a building. This building doesn't have an entrance, nor does it connect down to the city beneath. It is a giant, um, it's kind of segmented into what would be a Rubik's Cube, but all of the sides are black, and the interior is glowing a very faint white. The console is in front of it. There's no clear door inside. Um, you move over to it, and... This is some real, this is some real shit. You have no idea what it does, and there's a lot of buttons. Hmm. If I roll alchemy, can, or crafting, or whatever, can I basically, like, be poking at it, even if I'm not sure what I'm looking for, because I... The only, the only real way to figure out what this would be doing is through an Emolite sense check, which I don't believe you have access to. No. You can just push buttons at random. Okay! Is high good or bad? High is incredible. <laughs> oh my god! Breathtaking. Let's go! The, um, the Rubik's Cube desegments out into uh instead of being three by three by three it each of the blocks stacks one on top of the other and it lowers itself so that the topmost block is at the same level that you are at the rest of it now extending far down into the city beneath and the wall in front of you just bleeds away and you see the white interior as this uh as this kind of kind of spongy looking room where the walls, the ceiling and the and the floor are all made of the same kind of kind of weird stuff. And there's a trap door in the middle of it that leads down. Uh by this all point right, well, I'm going to crawl in and poke around. Hold up. Um so you don't have to crawl in. You have to you have to jump like a 10 foot gap out to this opening because there's no entrance from the ballast bridges and, and then it's I crawl in. It's quite large enough for you to stand in. All right, but that's like metaphorical crawling in and poking around. Yeah. All right. Can the can the rest of the party see see me? The or... rest of the party catches up before you do this. Okay, so I wave to them and then. Joink. Kim, Kim, what are you doing? I found a door. Come. <sighs> She's like a kid Kimmy... in a candy store. All right. Ah. Uh... Maybe this does not go to where we're supposed to be going? Well, you don't know till you go through the trap door, do you? I'm pretty sure it's not going where we're supposed to be going because it goes straight down. But look! So you look down, Catherine, at the region of the city where this leads to, and this does indeed lead down into the into the to the region of smaller buildings. It's like 300 feet below the ballast bridges. There's also a huge rift between the city, the section of the city that this leads to and the region of the city you actually need to get to, which is also higher in elevation. In the distance on that half, you see like the giant factory that you need to get past. And it would not only be a much longer walk, but a much more complicated walk if you were to go down to the city beneath right here. Okay, but it's a view. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna write down on my crude little map. You know, X marks the spot. This is where the cool trapdoor thingy is, and this is what button you press. So, have you, uh, have you jumped across yet? 
Um, or, or is this before you jump across? I've jumped. All right, you've jumped. As you, as the two parties talk to one another, um, Catherine, you hear their voices as if, uh, as if they're a little distant, a little more distant than they than what than the actual distance that is there. As you, uh, you also felt like you passed through a very thin film as you entered this place, and upon landing, you kind of bobbed up and down with the uh, with the the elasticity of the floor here. Huh. So is that an Arcana chick, or is that just the huh? This seems like more Emilite shit. Um, Arcana wouldn't really do much for you. However, Wait, cool. the, the trap door, it sings to you, Catherine. I put my ear to it. Not literally, but it, 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 it is tantalizing. <laughs> Interact okay, I with flip the it trap open. door. You, you move over to the center, and you pull up the metal panel leading down into the depths. And as you do, you see a room very similar to this one. Except... Who in your party do you like the most? Virgil. You see Virgil down there. Huh. He is, uh, he's propped up sitting on, a, sitting on a lone chair that looks like it was plucked straight out of the lagoon. And he's got a wine glass in one hand, and he's messing around with uh, with a console that controls some some robotic arms over a table. And the table is doing medicinal science. Hey, Virgil, can you hear me? Can you hear me? So, Virgil, um, <clears throat> you hear that in your head. But we'll get to that. So, uh, so, anyways, moving back to uh, to right as the party has left this building, Virgil, you are sitting in darkness for uh, yep. a good couple of minutes before you hear the distinguished footsteps of Fenica return, and they look at you, but you can't see before saying, "Ah, injured in the line of." Uh, Line of fire? Sure was. Blinding light bullet. I, I recognize those wounds, and to be frank, I'm quite surprised you're alive. So am I. So am I. So, um, not saying that. Uh, not not saying this to be to be contrary or or rude or mean but well we don't have very good medical facilities here not in this building at the very least so the best i can really do is make you comfortable well I'll consider this a nice break from the madness, then. Roll insight. Sure. And not insight, perception. <laughs> with... with uh, I'm just gonna roll. <laughs> Alright, yeah. It's just the two of you. Well, it's just the two of it. you in this room. Uh, passive doesn't function here because poor poor Virgil's blind. Doesn't have all of his faculties available to him. This sounds like I should push it. And you, would yeah. you like to? Maybe I would like should. to, yes. All right, go Maybe ahead. you should always push rolls at all times and never Do you stop. have any HP left to push with? You haven't long rested. I have anything. three after that. Alright, um, with a 20. Uh, nope, nothing. Eh, it was worth a shot. As for accommodations, I could take you upstairs. I could get you some food. We could, um, could give you the grand tour. We could have a conversation. I'm a little curious about what you lot are doing here and how you got one of the lifts powered. 
and also why you're at odds with Razorface. And uh, actually, yeah, let's talk for a bit. And you I hear a, you. you hear a cushion depress from across from you as Fenica sits down. From the top, why, oh why, do you have that dogged man hunting you down? Well, it started with the fact that he is an illusionist assassin, and she knows some techniques that she shouldn't know, I guess. For fuck's sake, the dark magic narc. He really is. Like, he's very bad about this. <laughs> is this the friend that was stabbed in the back? Yes. The friend you really that was should, stabbed in really the back. really should use names. Uh, Amalia. Her, her name's Amalia. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful name. It's not the best name, but it's not the worst, I suppose. That's, uh, that's <coughs> tall talk coming from a Virgil. Doesn't spell it right. So, <laughs> moving on, you got one of the lifts working, and... We Lagooners have been stranded here for months now. Want to explain that? Um, the older, taller, white-haired man, he did fucking something to it, made a, a thunder sword or something and just kind of jabbed it in. And we fought the thing that was eating up all the electricity. Are you telling me you don't know his name? He was one of the oh. few of you that I recognized. Oh, what is his name? Begins with a, a, a K, I think. Kane? I think I've heard people call him Kane. You don't see this, Virgil, but Fenica just shakes their head in, in, in half disbelief and also disgust at the irreverence. It's irreverence. fair. Yeah, it had to be something like that, I'm sure. Uh... They just rub the bridge of their nose with their with their fingers. Um, I suppose that makes sense. What are you doing here? Well, we are actually hoping to restore balance. I suppose would be one way to say it, because. Uh We've, we've seen this before. It was very horrible, and frankly, I just want to fix it. That might I want be the, uh, That might be the most idyllic and pathetic thing I have simultaneously heard. In the same breadth of months as we've been trapped up here for, you want to bring balance? What is this Azunian pokey? Well, to be completely honest with you, it makes sense. If everything was separated, it would be like an equal scale or something. I wasn't paying too much. You're attention. saying that you want to separate Nosos from the Bastio district. Or at least that's what I'm praying that you're saying. Because yes. at the very least, that gives us common ground. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And I wanted to do it without killing any Aurum. If I could talk to Razorface, I would love to explain it to him. I don't want to be his enemy. The dude is fucking terrifying. I like him. I respect him. But... Even though his name is Arthur. Whoops. Shh. Arnold. Um, it's oh. Arthur. Shut up. It's, it's always been Arnold. I fucked it up. No, please. Don't I kind of like Arthur that. more. I have to be honest. I don't care if you Arnold. like Arthur more. It's not Arnold. 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 Yeah, he's an aardvark <laughs> underneath there. Uh, hey, Arnold. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull his underwear over his head and steal his lunch money. <laughs> do it. He knew he should have oh. stayed home from school today. <laughs> yeah. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Ride on the magic school bus? Get the hell out of here! I'm fucking the party. Guys. The party arrives on the lift. It zooms in <laughs> to Razorface's hand. It zooms into Razorface's hand, and it's just the Arthur clenched fish. <laughs> 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 Anyways, 
Um, roll another perception check, Virgil. You broke my model plane! God. Let's see what we've got here. Hey, a natural 20. Don't think, uh, don't think the 20 got you much earlier. They did not, but I can't push myself anymore, and that's a 13 normally, which is already pretty high, so... Literally just re-roll it. Alright, I'm using yours. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, you know I'll, I'll this has happened an you. awful lot in this campaign. Yeah, yeah what's going I, on? I feel, like prob- I feel like probability's broke. <laughs> There's something. Uh, you, you're, you feel a little lighter, even though Walk you're sitting over. down. You feel a little lighter, and uh, you kind of you move your your hands over your over like your pockets and where you store things, and you notice that. There's a few things missing. Mm-hmm. What's missing? Like? Um, what are you looking for? I could help you rifle through things, given you don't have your eyesight to help you. Well, it's a little odd, I suppose, but... Well, as long as everything is okay around here, I should really, really should check my Emilite bag, and that's the first thing. Do you want candy? I can make some candy while we discuss this. You're very lucky that I don't have children. (laughs) I'm very lucky that I like children, so... And and you you hear in your head, Virgil, because... Wow. Uh, you hear in your head Catherine say, What are you doing down there? The fuck? Can you hear me? Excuse um, me? I'm hearing the voices of one of my companions. Oh, hey, great, you can hear me. I'm talking to you. I found this like weird box thing and I climbed in and there's a trap door and I can see you. Wait, I'm reaching yeah. through right now. Can you see my hand anywhere? Okay. What the fuck are you talking to? Be, I'm blind. Right. Oh, right. 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 Um. Uh. Can you? Um. Is there anyone with you? You could ask if they see my hand. Do you see a hand? Uh. You hear Fenica get up and start to walk off. <laughs> they yeah. just bring to themselves. That's what I thought. What's wrong with this person? <laughs> <sighs> Wait, so I'm all, so I'm all just standing. Well, there goes my conversation. Looking fucking confused, just like... Kibi, who the fuck are you talking to? Virgil? Kibi, we left Virgil back at the... Back at I the know that! Room. And he's down there! I mean, I can see him down there! I mean, he's probably not actually down there, but I can see and talk to him down there. You ruined my conversation! That's okay, I'm better conversation anyway! Yeah, I'm not gonna deny that. Uh... Oh. Amalia just, Amalia just, Amalia just looks at Psycho and like, do you see? Do you see? <laughs> she, she's starting to see it. Anyway, Kane? Should, should it be rather simple that Kane can, like, conjecture that Emily shenanigans are going on? Um, no. No? It doesn't okay. look like a tower made of Emilite. Okay. Okay, well... So, I, like, what would I roll in to, like, try to, you know, understand what's going on? Alright, I'm gonna take a sunflower seed. <laughs> Uh, roll, roll nature. Roll nature, Dante. Nature. Tell me if you hear anything drop. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Passable. Um. What do I give you with a sixteen? This thing is behaving more like a creature than it is like a construct. Hmm. The thing being the uh the. The tower of cubes that Shani is now inside. So, Amalia is going to raise her hand and slap it against the console. Uh, what is the imprisoner's will tell me? It's not good or bad. You slap it against. There's buttons. Are you gently touching it without de- depressing any of the buttons? Yeah, I'm not touching the buttons. I'm just putting my hand. Slams it on with the might of God. 
All right. The, uh, the we got to be careful with Eric today, guys. The Christ, he's will, spicy. The Imprisoner's Will tells you that... Um, it tells you that there's three different configurations. One is a helix. One is a line. The line is currently what it's in. And the other is a cube. And the cube is dormancy. The line is lure. And the helix is consumption. Kiwi, can you come back over here for a second? But I'm talking to Virgil! I know, but can you just come back over here just for a second? Alright, what is it? And is Kiwi back over? Do you jump back over? Yeah. Amalia, the minute she does Amalia, just slams it back down to dormancy. Wait, what do you I was talking to Virgil. Did I hear a sunflower off. seed drop? Um, no, you don't. The wall closes off and it reconfigures back into the uh, 3x3 Rubik's Cube. So, so TV, that yeah. setting was on, is called the lure. The next stage is when it changes into a helix, and that setting is called devour. Consumption. Consumption. What? Awesome! Okay, so we gotta, who are we gonna throw in to test this? No as one! You, as we're you, going to love trying to be so as much. You, as She's you, the greatest. As you, as, you, as you all are scolding Catherine, the bridge leading to where you need to, you need to go that was moved into place starts to move again. And you're gonna have to hurry real quick to get there. Alright. Um, Amalia just, just grabs Catherine flings her over her shoulder and just bolts for the <laughs> bolts for it. So this is a uh, tower that leads to a very long escalator that winds around a couple of the lower buildings that are still smaller than the skyscrapers like Lagoon but they're still formidable. And uh, you start descending on, a, on an escalator, elevator kind of thing, platform. There's, um, it looks like there's a lot more people around here. Hey, I, thought we went, I thought we wanted to go up. Uh, no, you're you're moving laterally and then also slightly down. You need to get across the chasm that's underneath you, which this takes you across. Okay. Um, you're regarded by a few people that are on the same lift as you, and across there's another lift that's much more densely uh, occupied by a bunch more Arium, you start to see some of the denizens of Nostos, if that's what they are, as these uh, these grasshopper-headed individuals that vary in size and in, like, structure. Some of them have, like, these, uh, like these portions of their bodies that are vaguely centaur-like, except instead of horse legs, they, they just kind of, like, slither along the ground in their robes, and then they come up off come up off the ground into a torso with like three arms on each side there some of them are bipedal some of them are like fully horizontal and their heads are much larger they have uh it seems like they talk with the same the same language that you all use as well as the ones that the arium around here use but there's there's like these clicking noises in the back Maya tries to think what these things are before she realizes that's not going to work anymore. <laughs> Anybody want I... to talk about the fact that a couple of you aren't tied to the Primavera? Well, yeah, Maya knows that, but she's going to have to process that. Uh, Cap, Cap, Catherine's the only one who's currently tied to him. Uh... So Amalia is just whispers to Catherine, who's currently being held over her shoulder. Think about what these what these guys are. And tell me what you get. Um. Okay. You think about them real hard. Yep. Nostian. They're Nostians. Of course. Oh, that seems easy enough. 
And she's just going to put Catherine down and then uh, she is going to carry on her merry way as if this isn't weird at all. The lift, uh, it clicks into place as it meets with, with the roads that lead into the alleys that the massive factory in the distance just dominates with its size. And the road forward is clear. You all begin to take it. Cecil. Yup. You have been traversing the alleys on the opposite side of this city, following the scent of Cyrus. And are you? You're still invisible, right? Uh, for the ten minutes. No hour. No minutes. Um, that I was that I was allowed to be. Yeah. Um, nothing particularly broke it. So. So. For that. As, yeah. As you're moving through the alleyways. Um, the scent begins to lead you down places where it looks like uh, traffic is not very frequent. And you feel like you're coming into a bad part of town. And these, cool. uh, th this concern is realized when you come upon what looks to be this giant construct made of these chunks of ore that is just lurched over the still forms of some Arium as well as Nostian underneath it, and it looks to be eating them. Well, Cecil doesn't know what a golem is, but he does know what a threat is. Um, as he... It's not in your way, and it doesn't sense you. You're still invisible. Something about it kind of irks him um, on like a personal level. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the Arium... Maybe he's just has Sentra on his mind, but something Maybe about Maybe he just it, wants to fight. I mean, usually there's more to it than that. There's been a lot of things and a feeling of uh, a feeling of a lack of control, also from the whole uh, debacle and being unconscious during Razorface's uh, uh, predicament, I guess. Um, and he kind of like slowly nods to himself. And realizes that this is what he's gonna do today, um, as he uh, attempts to sneak up close to it. As you get closer, you realize that as it's hunched over, it's probably about six or seven feet tall, raised up like to its full stature. It'd be about eleven or twelve. However, you're definitely gonna get the jump on this. What is the thinnest portion of its torso? Portions of it are like hovering it doesn't look like it's all ah, so it cannot, all right so it can't be bisected understood however um, you do you are you, you do your hunter's instinct clues you into this dull humming in in the interior of its of its largest chunk all right cecil uh seeing that and uh kind of understanding um it on a vague level uh, first, uses Rahimim. Okay, make the roll. Uh, it's 2048? Yep. It's been a while. Doesn't it say on your Rahimim sheet? Do you have a Rahimim sheet? Uh, no. So its movements begin I to... Its movements begin to slow, and, uh, and this sluggish nature begins to like just envelop it entirely as it starts trying to fight against it and it causes this this no. really nasty like reverberating vibration in its arms the only... but doesn't seem to be frozen completely all right because what i was going to say was like i remember when it happened to stella she didn't seem to notice at first but maybe it's different for a golem uh, uh, different because stella's a person that's true, I guess this thing is just nothing. Um, as Cecil, I mean, do I have, do, can I still act? Yeah. All right. It's not moving against you, it's confused. Fantastic. Um, Death in the West, instead of uh, appearing as like a weird pseudo scythe, in this moment, kind of knowing that it is a, there is a weak point inside of metal it configures to be a point, uh, like a, like a point, almost like a spear, but with a hollow, uh, like a bunch of weird kind of like 
hollow bones, uh, kind of making it so that when it stabs through, the coagulant shoots out. Okay. Um, and basically rends the inside of it, which is just my way of flavoring it being a guillotine without using gui- an actual guillotine. No problem. Roll attack with disadvantage. All right. I will. Hmm, let's look. Got everything on. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Uh, 11, I'm going to push that. Okay. 19. So it bores through in its spear form and just starts sending pieces of shrapnel yeah. of this ore away as the coagulant like pulsates through the handle and then yeah you describe this thing yeah so this thing what it dying. does is <laughs> okay um what what essentially happens is that as the spear goes through the weird hollow sections of the tip of death in the west begin to kind of like bubble in almost a way and then immediately solidify and spike outwards like it looks like a like it turns from spear to morning star as uh, a bunch of these weird gooey red spikes shoot out uh and blood letter the, yeah basically the blood letter um basically shoot out for maybe like a portion of a second before receding and he, as he pulls it out and like looks down at the arium that it was consuming so uh the 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 like big portion of it's like a torso that this this humming was coming through is corrupted by death in the west and starts to break apart as the coagulant just snuffs out this this spark of life um and with this reverberating roar the portions of it that are still seemingly animated to this slow degree it lifts up and congregates them into this massive right arm that slams into one of the walls of this alleyway and starts integrating a lot of the metal of the building the walls attached to into its essence before pulling it down in an attempt to collapse the alleyway on you and the other two people. Um, Are those mm. In the very quick glance, you can afford them. Both of them are long since dead. These have been corpses for a while. And there's... This isn't that much of a... This isn't that urgent. Like, at a quick pace, you could get out of the way. You don't know how quickly you would be able to leave while carrying them, though. Um... I think Diesel... Like, so this, this, this funny little golem is still, in some meaning, alive? Or was that like a... Roll insight? Okay. This is a uh, death throw. Ah, okay. So Cecil, realizing this, um, tries to take one and then book it. Okay, the Arium or the Nostian? Arium. Okay, you pick up uh, what is left of the Arium, which is most of its torso, an arm, and uh, and a and a head. It's mostly it's mostly robotic, and you just carry it over your shoulder as you book it out. Roll athletics. Ooh, athletics, that's fun. Um, hey, that's not bad. Pogchan, that's really good. Yeah, you make it out pretty easily as the alleyway collapses and bits of emolite corruption start to spiderweb out to the street, but they stop before they can really latch on to anything. And the, uh, the, the, the humming noise ceases entirely. You're carrying a dead Arium. This, one, kinda... this one's made of iron. Cecil kind of lies them down. Um, assumedly, they don't look like Sentra. Nope. But Cecil's projecting a little bit. Uh, does it have open eyes, or does or do did they? Yes. Um, Cecil kind of closes them and like leans them up against something in, in a semi-dignified position uh, before continuing on where he's going. So you turn and you hear. How admirable. As you turn in the direction that you were following to lead you to Cyrus, and there he is, standing there. He's got a notebook open, and he's been writing in it. He approaches slowly, and as he gets closer, and you can see, you can see like the intent in his eyes more clearly, there's this strange 
non-recognition in them. Why go to so much length to save someone who's already perished? Um, how unrecognized, like, how, how, how much of a lack of recognition is this? Um, roll insight. Alright. It is more than something off about how Cyrus is All right. Then Cecil immediately me, ugh, immediately responds. Nah, I'm beginning to think that's what I'm doing with you. He blinks. Oh, are we familiar? You you know you know Cyrus. I believe so. Shifter. Oh, that's a shame. I suppose I should leave then. And, uh... Before you go, actually, I do okay. have a question. Uh, unexpected, but I'll oblige. Where is Cyrus? You're, you're looking at him. Oh. He's dead. No, he's not dead. Well, then, could you get out of him? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Any more riveting questions? Uh, yeah, um... Is he... Like, can I get him after you're done? He was going to die, so... If, actually, I'd consider that a favor. Well, what do I owe you, then? Fine. Fuck it. Uh, how about just an introduction? And Cyrus approaches you and extends a hand and says, I am Lazarus. Head Lazarus. of the Prophecy Sect. And he gives you uh, a smile. Cecil nods and, um... Actually unhooks the dagger off of off of his hip and is like, right, I suppose I should return this then, Cecil. And instead of handshaking, he clasps the dagger into his hand with both of his and then gives it one firm shake before sniffing and looking back at the Arium and is like, well, I've got better things to get to if Cyrus is in relatively safe hands. Um... He twirls the dagger around, almost curiously, and then looks up and says, Ah, uh, no. He's yours now. Oh. Well, thank you kindly. And then with a blink, the recognition, in tandem with a whole bunch of immediate horror, comes back to Cyrus's face, and he goes, Oh, oh god! Where, where's, the, where's the lift station? Where's the lift? Where, where the he's all just kind of like puts hands on his shoulder and is like, this is beginning to become a habit. Anyways. What's that hi. smell? Oh. Yeah. Uh, lucky, it's not blood, it's just rust. Um, well, uh, I suppose we should be getting you out of here. Yeah. Is, it, is this nose nose? Yeah, something like that, I believe. Did we... We didn't star strike, did, did we? Wait, why did, why no, did my vision wait, go black? Uh, my, my fucking memories! No, wait, 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 Cyrus, Cyrus. Uh, prophecy sect, Lazarus, ring a bell? What? No! Ring what? Doesn't? Like, I hate to be a downer, and I hate to spring some information on you. I should probably sit you down with some hot tea or whatever, but he was in you, and we had a bit of a chat. Uh, Cyrus looks horrified. Yeah. Uh, nah, it's fine. Uh, you're alright. Uh, he... Uh, anyways, so basically... Um, hi. Can we... I'm so glad Cecil is here to be a comforting presence in this trying time. Right. Listen, all you need to know is that you're alive, and this is the third time. Now, let's go. He uh, steals himself, nods, and uh, starts to move with you. I wonder if I can get some sort of coupon, you know, at the, uh, at the uh, Tenebrae after I save you a seventh time. Uh, he's... He, he looks down at his hands, he's like, why, why do I have the dagger? Oh, I thought that uh, Lazarus was going to take that with him, but I guess he couldn't really. And, uh... 
I guess back to. I still actually, haven't heard actually, actually, no, sun, actually, a up. sunflower seed drop. <laughs> uh, no, you have not. So you, uh, well, let's actually stick on Cecil for a second here. You, um, you get back to where the lift is, and how are you hiding Cyrus? Um, good question. Idea. Um, stick him in a bag of holding. Cecil uh, sighs and is like, well, I have a terrible idea, and I'm very sorry, but I think that you're going to need this. And Death in the West slinks off um, and kind of forms because it has this weird pseudo-metal, in a way, um, around the ridge of it and around the in quotes blade of it that has been seen to be able to produce a little bit more of itself. So you're going to disguise him as an Arium? Disguise him as an Arium with this weird face, kind of. This weird, yeah. like, pseudo face. As Death in the West, the West can be horrifying off, as always. He looks at it and he says, what? What's wrong with it? What's that? And you notice uh, that it's rotted a little further. Cecil looks at it and it's like, uh, it seems to um, react poorly to Nostos. So I should probably be a bit more careful with it, but oh God. Well, I'm not from Nostos, so. I yep. like the plan, and he, yep. he fishes a nose plug. You're fine out. to put that on. Better than I dying. To, I suppose I was just expecting a bit more resistance. Usually people aren't so happy when they see it. I think it's pretty cool. Oh, thank you. Anyways. And, uh, shall we consider this the fourth time? And, um, Something like that. I'm gonna... That I guess that just works. Uh, how are you disguising yourself as an R.E.M.? Or, rather, you're just slinking in the shadows while... Well, he moves in the directions you gave him, right? Uh, pardon, what'd you say? You're probably oh, yeah, no, Cecil's not yeah. following him. Cecil's just like, all right, so here's where you're gonna go. Can't mess this up. Uh, I'm gonna go through the same way I came, and then dip. So you, um, he gets in the elevator and in the tower that that you had climbed down physically, and you're like perched on top of the elevator as it. As it slowly just rises through the facility. He's probably like just sat down cross-legged, just kind of like reminiscing and kind of like ruminating on why he killed that weird creature. He par partially doesn't really know. Uh, anyways, yeah. The elevator reaches its apex and the doors open and Cyrus just kind of like awkwardly ambles out, looks both directions at nothing because there's no road, and comes out onto the ballast bridges. Moved over to the console. There is currently no bridge leading from Lagoon to this place, and there needs to be. So you're probably are you? How are you hidden? Um, like last time, just kind of like scuttling along the bottom slash uh, middles of the machinery, and kind of like because Cecil is like a pseudo contortionist it's canon at this point in the way that he can kind of like just cram himself into things yeah um and so it's not horribly hard for him but it's uh it's probably i wouldn't say it's pleasant are you using death in the west or are you refraining uh he can't use death in the west because it's that's on that's right you can't um so cecil, please yeah no i'm going to do that but what cecil is doing is uh it's actually, like, very precarious in the way that he's managing this. There's a couple of ways that he's sidling up with, um, like, basically upside down and backwards, with his legs on one side and his arms outstretched over his head on the other as he's, like, scaling the side of something. Um, uh, and I'm, he rolls a, a uh, wow, a 27. Oh my. Yep, you're contorted. And you hear, you hear up above, Cyrus just like, I'll be like, uh, he hello, gentlemen. Um, I need to get to uh, which one was it? Um, uh, that that one, and and they stop conversing with one another and they regard Cyrus. You're all, you're just getting all of this aud audibly. Yeah. Um, it's like it or bad. <laughs> uh, you know. And also roll deception to see how good the disguise holds up on close inspection. Sure. 
uh, two things. One, I need my uh, my character sheet is static; it's not moving. Cringe. You uh, medicine and intimidation. If that's okay. True. Yeah, that was just me randomly clicking because uh, okay. it's not working. Um, close it out. Yeah. Close it back on well, again. Well, it's not. It's not allowing me to close it either. Um. <laughs> It's actually the entirety of roll twenty. Oh wait, wait, wait! It's back, it's back, baby. Pogger. Um, okay, so what was it? What did I have to do? What did I have to roll? Roll deception to see how good the disguise is on close inspection, and is high good or bad? Uh, eighteen, not bad. Um, high's bad. God damn it! So, uh, I should never have strayed from my ways. The one with the you clicking voice. Me. At one least it wasn't on one hundred. The one with the clicking voice gives a list of coordinates, and Cyrus is just like, uh, y yep, yep, that one. And um, at this point, on a console. At, at this, this point, point, Cecil is like, oh god damn it, uh, and jumps up, uh, and like scales back up, and attempts to whip, like, like, like while they're focused on, uh. Our good friend, our good friend Cyrus, um, sneak up behind them. All stealth. All right. Um, so you you do you sneak up behind them, and when Cyrus sees you, he gets a big surprised look on his face, and then. All right. Wait, wait. Before they turn around, uh, they only hear as Rahimim triggers. All right, they're both frozen. Wait, they are. Yep. Um, can, did Cecil? Are these coordinates at all? Uh, as like as far as Cecil is concerned, does he know what the right sounded, coordinates are? Sounded like random numbers. However, the console looks self-explanatory. All right. So while they're frozen, uh, Cecil walks by them, um, and it's like, all right. Uh, so you're gonna want to go uh, here. And he, only with a little bit of guessing, uh, tries to change it back to the correct coordinates and location. Uh, the bridges float on by, and uh, the correct one lines up. Cyrus is like, I, I didn't give you away, did I? Um, I mean, <laughs> no. Um, okay. as, as he... All right, now just to flex for Cyrus, he unsnaps his fingers as they're looking, like as they're mid turnaround in front of them, and then immediately jumps back off of the bridge. Uh, maybe triggering the periphery, but probably not. Who cares? It's cool. It happens. So uh, they look back, and it's like, back, oh, um, they look back at Cyrus. You hear, "Are you okay?" And he goes, uh, "Um, yes. I, I, I. Turns out, uh." As you can see, uh, it's, it's already good, so I'll be on my way. Have a wonderful day, you too. And Cyrus just starts shuffling awkwardly past them. Uh, they regard one another, and the two of you make your way back into Lagoon. Yeah. Cecil opens up the door and is like, All right, so this place looks like a brothel, but it's actually pretty nice. Uh, and, you know, looks in. Is, is the host person here? Fenica is not currently there. We're going to move right, everyone Fenica. else. Excellent. So, Amalia, you and the rest of the party have just stepped off of this uh, this escalator lift, and it has deposited you to a region of this city that looks less um, less industrial than than most of the other portions. There's there's actually like like little parks here, and the trees that grow. While looking at first glance like the trees that you're used to, their bark is like this really deep crimson red, and um, and they have like they have more more uh, like the the Pythagorean influence is a lot more obvious. Like there's there's this geometricness that comes off in ways that like it wouldn't normally. Um. So, that said, nobody here really looks like uh, they're here on pleasant business. 
you see a lot of small parties that are doing uh, what look to be investigations and reconfiguring different patches of emolite either in the ground or in the buildings themselves. Uh, the roads here are thankfully inanimate and and consistent and one very large thoroughfare leads up to the factory before branching out and moving around it. And it looks like that's the road you guys want. So Amalia is just going to take a quick tweet and see if she can see what it is they're actually doing. So I'm going to roll investigation on that. How close are you getting? Not very. Okay. Uh, just something to note, the people that Cecil saw down at the lift station, these black cloaked men with golden heads, they are also here. I'm guessing these are also lightning arium? Uh, they look a little different. They're taller and there's less machinery in, in their like in their bodily cohesion. Hmm. Can I take a reasonable guess of these are the police we've been told to avoid? Um, they look put together enough that maybe not, but uh, they come off more as like a high society than they do enemies. What a terrible role. <laughs> Imagine rolling before you know position and effect. <laughs> Uh, Imagine yeah. having position and effect. This is, uh, this cringe. Is desperate, limited. Imagine Caro saying cringe. You, um. No, I'm joking. So, Molly, <laughs> before you split off from the group, are you saying anything to them? I'm just trying. Just going to go and see. I'm going to see if I can see what they're working on. Just carry on as normal. Alright. And, uh, she looks at Kavi very pointedly. We'll, we'll, uh, abstain from touching anything that looks important. That is normal. We'll abstain from touching anything that looks... So you want me to be act normal then? Uh -huh. So, Amalia, you move forward and you see that... It looks like they're installing some kind of emolite system around uh, what looks to be a closed bay door leading into this huge factory. There's uh, the road in front of it. You see steams alongside, like leading down, almost like a small, like, like, basically you intuit that the road leading into this bay door can be dropped and things can rise up uh, through the cavity that it would it would create. Almost like a removable helipad. And um, it kind of implies that there's a network beneath these streets as well. That said, it looks like it's it might be some kind of security system. So they're going around installing a security system? They're going around either installing or maintaining a security system on the uh, the portions of the factory wall that leads to to its interior and okay the bay doors can both be opened to the streets and also like risen into from underneath well, we're not trying to get into the factory are we we're trying to move around it yeah So, the security systems that they're working on, is one of them, like, free? Uh, yeah, you, you see a bay door, like, down, like, past a little, a little natural ridge that comprises, like, one of these parks that are weirdly orbiting this factory, and it kind of cuts it off from the, from the prying eyes of anybody that might be out in the open or watching you. Nobody's really working on it. Great. Uh, Malia goes over and rush her um, prisoner's well hand against it. Um, you're using effort every time you every time you use this, right? It's a ten minute duration. It's been longer than ten minutes. Fair enough. Just making sure. 
So you punch the fingers into the into the security system, and uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like the people that come in and out of this building are very very um, rigorously monitored. It has different it has different net codes and um, and digit sequences for Arium for Nostians and for another designation which are called uh, let me comb through my notes here which are called uh Hot points students I thought it was something fancier than that but i guess it's just students Okay, and so from what she's seeing here, everything's being monitored? Everything that goes into the factory is very heavily monitored, yeah. And that's that's the purpose of this system. Um, it does look like there's some countermeasures, but none of them are lethal. It's all strictly information. Okay, so basically, if you, if, you, if you come in, the security system's not going to blare. You're not going to attract the attention of guards. People will just know you're there. Okay. And just from this, uh, is there likely to be any trouble if they just move past? Are they going to register as not being in the system at all? Um, yeah, it will register you as not being in the system and therefore unidentified. That said, it still seems like there's no implied danger about that. Um, you guys don't need to get into the factory. You need to get around it, and none of the security systems in place prevent that. Ah, uh, great. So, Amalia... Actually, just a quick weary to uh, define students. Define students. Yeah, students are the people that do the work in the factory. That is an odd way to refer to the proletariat, but whatever. <laughs> so Amalia is not going to do that. She's going to take her hand off, and then she's going to walk back to the group. Way well, looks clear. We just keep moving. All right. I'll have you know I behaved abnormally. He's Wait smiling. a minute, uh, Amalia. While you're coming through the database, is I good or bad? Hi, it's good. Ah, uh, Sentra's in here. <gasps> Let's go! Yes. You come across his designation. Fuck me. Go say hi! You okay, Amalia? Sentra is... Sentra is in that build. Alright, let's go say hi. Wait. It's not something we can do. There's a security system around the place that will immediately know if we are not supposed to be there. Well, we're not supposed to be here either, but we managed to be. As in the guards would immediately know that we're supposed to be there and take action. Perhaps we could send him a message by... Hmm... If only there were some. If only there were some way that one of us could use, I don't know, some kind of magic to talk to a person from great distances away. But who would we ask to do that? I don't know. I don't really pay attention to. It. No, wait. You got. You do that, right? Ha! I it's... remember. Sort of, uh, rolls her rolls her eyes and just uh, just starts being on. Rolls her eyes and rolls her dice. Oh. This is the. <laughs> this is not. Uh, 
the armor, she's not. Amalia's not really equipped to go on a massive infiltration mission here. Also, I mean, from what we've seen on how uh, how magic filtering thresholds treat treat disguises. Yeah, she may as well just walk in there and go, How do you do, fellow kids? Yo, what is dope? And then do the robot dance, and then just get immediately get shot. So, um, you guys I, make I your way... I hate to see that. You guys make your... <laughs> me too. You guys make your way around the factory, and as you do, you're led into a, a smaller district that looks like it's... that, that stops looking like a, the conglomeration of parks. Actually, and just... Just before I go, okay. do I remember what's the names of the, the people we were supposed to be looking for? Uh, I'll bring that up. Uh, you're looking for a man named Craning and the information that he had. Great. Is there any record of them? Being... No. No. Okay. Okay, so Amalia just deletes your Google search history and carries on. Pog. Um... You make your way around, and uh, pretty quickly you start to smell the stench of decay, of recent decay. Oh, this and is you find uh, you find the body of a gold arium tucked behind some crates, and uh, next to them is somebody facing away from the from you guys, and dressed in dressed in um, like leathers, but but also like cloth and casual wear facing away uh it looks like they're sorting through like papers and and whatnot that have all been just spread out a lot of them are grimy and have absorbed like oil and stuff and it looks like this person's trying to recover something they don't notice your guys's approach okay i don't think he's noticed our approach Alright, what's our next? I don't know much about sneaking around. What, what's Kane's opinion on the matter? Uh, I don't know. Sneaking isn't my thing, but I can't afford to big mess of things, I guess. You can't really do the whole move through the shadow things here. Um, you can actually. You couldn't when the shadows were red shifted. That power has returned to you. And he, okay, so he's gonna like say that while attempting to, and then it's gonna work, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, I guess I can do that." So, should it be left to me then? I don't know, old man, old lady. Not really that sneaky. Crotchety. <laughs> but, okay, so. Yeah, I just remember that you're like a female warrior and body and so. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, Amalia is going to. Does this individual look like the, the cloaked people? No, this person looks much less threatening. Okay, they're just uh, a whole. Shorter. Group. They, they're they're about as short as Sentra, actually. Yeah, they're, they're a whole boy then. Uh, so, Malia, uh, uh, <laughs> sum, summoning up all of the... Summoning up all of the, the presence of mine that looks like she absolutely belongs there. Um, size. It's like... I can do this. I can do this. And then she coughs once, walks up. Uh, he looks over his shoulder, kind of like frantically scrabbles past the things that he's trying to recover. Very pointedly makes an effort of not like stepping on or or getting more gunk on any of the paper as this person like climbs to their feet. I can't explain. This ought to be this ought to be good. Um This is my grandpa. And um 
And I'm trying to uh, figure out what what happened to him. And um, this isn't this isn't her grandpa. I'm I'm just I I know it's a lie, but I'm gonna roll insight anyway. Go ahead. Uh, um, mostly just see what's actually going on here. Feel like sure. it rolls a one. And don't worry, sport. We'll help you with your grandpa. So it looks like. Um, you see a corpse which you were told to possibly expect and you see some seemingly important information just strewn about through some soiled documents it's possible that this man is craning and somebody else was also after the information and they beat you to it this man is what? it seems that the dead man is craning behind the boxes craning? Yes, Creening, who is the individual that you've been going for. Oh, cre- oh yeah. Okay. And and the and the person that was like hunched over the notes is somebody who is also after this information and beat you to the chase. Huh. <sighs> Guess we couldn't afford that pit stop the cubes, huh? Kane's gonna like look at Catherine Kavi whatever. <laughs> So, She's gonna look all innocent. Um, Amalia, Amalia just looks at this person and says, Oh, your grandfather. What's his name? Uh, Steve! <laughs> From Minecraft. Do you want another chance to lie to me? Aww. Something more plausible? Roll persuasion. <laughs> Does a high persuasion mean that they're gonna lie to her? You don't know. Uh, they gulp, but they doesn't seem like they can find the courage, Amalia. Push it. Excuse me, she. Doesn't seem like she can find the courage. Round is... Uh, the game's almost done. Pushing is literally a... Like, you always... It's always a benefit. Well, unless there's gonna... We be don't know fight. when the next long rest is gonna be. Uh-huh. Just sleep. Actually, I'm good to... I'm good to stop here. Alright. Uh, okay. uh, that was fun. Session. Let's do EXP. One uh, last but... cut to Virgil stare, stare, staring uh, at the let's ceiling. Do, let's do Susan Where the first. fuck is this? Because Fergus is a gamer and wants to split ASAP. I deal. No, I don't. Because Fergus is lame. It, it's a joke. Drive. Aggress the world until it leaves me and mine alone. You kill the golem for no reason. It was. It was for. It was for a symbolic reason. You're no right. Reason. You're right. It. It. You kill the golem because the corpses underneath it vaguely reminded you of you and yours. But wow. of course, you know. I mean, take that as you will. Ah, uh, roll history. Uh, roll history flaw. if you remember what you did this session. Flaw. Unafraid of death, terrified of loss. Yeah, you fought a golem. You had no idea what its capabilities were. And also, you also, uh, you also fucking went out and under threat of being shot on sight did the thing anyways and also you know actively like the only reason he didn't like try and kill the primaveral there is because is because he really 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 hates him and want, and knowing that that is like you know the 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 ultimate uh preferred end of him is one of the reasons why uh He's like, no, 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 you're staying alive, but, you know. All right. Because he, he t- very clearly would have probably died trying to fight the Prima Barrel there. Catherine. Ideals. Navigating normal human social interactions. I think you did your best. So, in particular, early on, between you and Fenica. She didn't quite get it, but, you know, she was trying. And yeah, exactly, exactly. Playing towards trying. That's what the ideal is. Heedless of consequences. Let's um, jump into this fun box! Let's jump into this fun box. Catherine is the best. I'm she not- really is. Yeah, it's good. Um, Amalia Bonanza. Uh, the path to power and self-improvement is through knowledge. Keep everyone alive and figure out a way back to Eden. 
attempt to give me a life against that's, all odds. That's true. Um, I'm. I want to ask you, out of character, why is Amalia okay sending Cecil off on Cyrus' rescue mission by himself? Because that is. Because if anyone is going to get that successfully, it's going to be Cecil. Because Virgil is blind. She has an absurd accent. Saiko doesn't want to step outside of her mask, and Kivi is Kivi. Okay, so you would say that she allowed it to happen like through trust in Cecil as opposed to disdain for both of them? Yes. Okay, that was the only thing I was slightly iffy on. Most people scream and run when they see a demon. I stop and take notes on its anatomy. It has a need to be in control of the situation. Please stop, play, please stop playing in the cybernetic anglerfish. <laughs> a very apt comparison. And also, um, I should say is that uh, the like a desire to be in control of a conversation. You get one more chance to lie. I can wait. I can wait. I can, I can wait. I can wait. No, no, you finish your conversation. I can wait. All right, Molly gets two. I wish- I, I genuinely wish I still had a gym teacher like that, so I actually did make them wait. God, true. Alright, Virgil, science must be advanced and used, regardless of cost. I'm blind. I didn't do that one this time. <laughs> actually, you were blind, and despite that, you wanted to admit- Used! I, 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 I did give a treatment to Amalia. Alright, um, I'm trying to be generous with Virgil, because he wasn't on screen for very long. Sociopathic malpracticing medicinal. He 100% narked to just because she asked. So that's pretty fucking sociopathic. It's true. It's true, it is. Nod uh, them, by the way. Fenneco them. Noted. Why didn't you ask, why did, why did you ask Eric? Where, what are the things that were in your pocket? Uh, because we were getting to that and then we were interrupted. What? What did God in his pocket see? Alright, alright. Kane. Hello. I didn't do much. Uh, wants to spread the word of Mercus and maybe not have so many followers die. It hasn't really worked. I want to say that you played the crotchety old guy in, uh, in not approaching before Amalia did. <laughs> I'm trying to be generous with Kane too. He wasn't on screen for very long. Or at least not notably. Lack of social attack from being a slight recluse. More so especially after the... Large altercation of old Nart's arrest. How does Kane feel about Nostos in this place that's like super, super rife with Emilis? He's low-key freaking out inside and he's not sure if he's giddy or if it's he's like, wow, this place is kind of... Wow. All right. I'll, I'll give you one EXP. Yay. He didn't do much, but he was definitely... He turned into a cyborg lady. All right, Psycho. Faith. I trust my deity will guide my actions. I have faith that if I work hard, things will go well. Donking. I don't think she really expressed her faith that much this session. So, you did bring up the zealous thing, and you explained the epiphanies that you had come to. I think that you have a little bit of an indistinct ideal. Um, it's probably because I copied. I I mean I can change it. Um, technically you change it when you fill the clock. Um, I'm trying to think. I trust my deity will guide my actions. I have faith that if I work hard, because it it seems like you were sticking to the path. Okay, she was 100% ready to go out there thing. with her mask. That's she, true. She had trust in that. Yep. Uh huh. That's true. And once again, being generous, you guys are temporary characters. I can sometimes come off as self important, even if I'm not aware of that fact. She 100% stepped out. <laughs> did, did she do anything else that was self important? Um. I mean, she kind of took initiative with the plot expedition thing, but she already gave me XP for that, so I'm not going to double dip. The minimalist right. 
uh, Aurum transformation? Like, oh no, I'm way too important for that bullshit. Um, that would be more that she's unflexible in her thinking, which is her flaw. Well, I think that was one of her flaws. I think I got rid of it. Shit. I don't know. Um. What's everyone thinking? 1 EXP or 2 EXP? Each. Depends shit. on if you one count XP. that second one or not. No, yeah, no, I think, that, I think 2 XP is good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, you know what? Me, as a PC, thinks that you should have not. Hmm. Shut Live up, Live in Ed your Lord. 1 EXP world. All right, and I think that's everybody, right? I think so. Okay, good session. What truly 